All right, we're making another video. So for the front wheel bearings, we went with the Timken wheel bearings. Because honestly, they weren't crazy more expensive than the other options. Got these from Rock Auto, as well as the U-Joint. And then classic Amazon for the brakes. Nothing too special. But we went with the 99 and a half and newer front brakes. If you know about the Cherokees, they switched the wheel bearing design. So it's a different height halfway through that year. And you can interchange them all you want, as long as you get the correct or the matching bearings and brakes. So I went with the newer style. But we'll replace both sides at the same time. And then while we're in here, we're doing brakes. And then we gotta do the U-joint. So we're gonna get all the way down to the axle shaft on this side, pull it out, place the U-joint. Yay. Now we got the wheel and everything off. I'm gonna bring you in here just to show you what we're dealing with and why we are replacing that U joint. Check this out. Let me see if I can get a better view. Yeah, if it wiggles that much, it needs to be replaced. I mean, it shouldn't wiggle at all. Look at that. And we're gonna put some more grease in our. Uh, outer axle seal. We put these in on the other side it went in like nice and tight. This side wasn't very tight so maybe I'll wrap some tape around it and try and slam it back in and we'll put some grease in there. But damn I haven't washed this car all winter so everything's kind of dirty in here. Need to give this a good spray when we're able to next time but at least some of these components will be fresh but yeah if you're able to wiggle any type of U-joint by hand that's no bueno. That's why we're replacing that. So we got got the axle out here. Let me just show you from this point to do why it needs to be replaced. So you can grab it by hand and it wiggles. And this is like it should be able to move, but not that easily. And it's quite wait, wait, yeah, you can see. No bueno. These are worn out wiggly. Now we can hammer this out. This style of joint I believe has clips on the inside. The new joint we got has inner clips to go in here and in here. So we're going to take a look at this and see if hammer those out. And then we also have the ball joint press and that red box there which also works for pressing out U-joints. I'm going to use that to get this thing out of here. But If your axle needs Viagra, U joint needs to be replaced. And the pads here too. Look at that. Our wear indicator in the middle is no longer super smooth. The outer pad still has a little bit, but that always happens because they're just single piston brakes that pushes on the inside. So your outside one won't wear down quite as quick. And our old wheel bearings, not looking too great. I mean, yeah, when I hold it like this, you can hear it. It's definitely got some play in it. The easiest way to tell, because this is a 1999 Jeep Cherokee, so the easiest way to tell what type of wheel bearing you got is to just 
pull the thing off and look at it. Also because someone could have replaced it at any other time with whatever one. So if I take my fresh one and I set it beside the old one. No, I think this is the older style, but we got the newer style with newer style brakes. So that will be nice. Check it out. It's just nice and fresh compared to that old crap. Yeah, so might as well replace all that and holding this in my hand, I know what's in the bag, but absolutely no play at all as it should be. And when I grab this one, you can just hear it. So before we put this all back together, we're going to clean up these surfaces, give them a good scrub down so it's nice and smooth while I'm in here. These are brand new. This is brand new. It's from a V8 Cherokee, as I said. You can check your tie rod and tie rod. Check your uh, check your sway bar lengths, bushings, all of this good stuff. Yeah, and then we will replace this. Very nice. So I got my U joint in device here on the bench, and I've zoomed in on this one here. You can see. I removed the rubber inside boot there to make it clearer to look at, but we've got the inner C-clip here. I just worked on the one on this side here. Let's see if I can make this stable. And this one basically just shattered out, and there's a little bit of a channel there where it runs in, and you can see we still have this one here, so we got to hammer that out. And then we'll be able to use the ball joint, ball joint, U joint combination press to get all of that out. And just again, I'll show you look at how much can play is in that. That's no good. One of the reasons I knew to look at it was because it was making a horrible clicking noise when I was driving, mostly on the highway. It started getting worse and worse and worse, just like. I couldn't hear it unless I rolled the window down, so maybe turn off your radio and roll the window down every once in a while when you're driving to see if there's anything wrong. Alright, so there we have it. Took out the rings from each side now it's out of that groove and in here it's out of that groove initially just trying it with the sold screwdriver screwdriver is that a flat screwdriver yeah and it worked for one of them but especially with how old and rusted this is just make sure you get the, the right tool for the job makes it easier use some argon gas propane would work but this is faster because it burns hotter nice heavy hammer and then I initially moved on to one of these chisels, but it's too, it doesn't weigh enough. Get something real nice, thick, and heavy. Got myself one of these and hammer it out away in the channels, freed it up. So now that that's off, I mean, it won't really make any difference to this because these are still pressed into the end. So now this is when we go get our U joint press and we can just pop these out, put the new one in, and get going on the other stuff. Okay, so I finally got this all disassembled. Basically, this is probably original, so 20 years of rust and stuff. Used a lot of heat on here to get it to start moving through. Hammered on it a couple times to kind of break it free, and I could see it was starting to come out. And this might be like a no shit for some of you, but um, with your press, start with a impact, get a nice, big, powerful one. Because, I mean, I started by doing it with my hands, and it was just getting... I felt like I was putting a lot of pressure on it, and inherently my worry is of pressing these in, even though it's like very solid steel. But anyway, I hit it with the impact, and it just like shot right through that combined with the heat, pushed it out. So you push one side out, and then this happens, so it pushes through. You can pop one hat off, and now I'm going to have to 
you just take the brass. Make sure you don't break your toes. So you just take the press, put it on the other side because this will still fit over that. And then just line this back up, push it through. That'll pop out. And just to show you here, the inside of these are nasty. You can see these needle bearings are starting to kind of fuse to the wall on two of them. But you want to know what the problem is? Here's one of these hats. What's missing from in there? Yeah, literally every single bearing. There's not a single bearing on the wall of this. So over time, it just wears down. They fall out. They go bye-bye. That's probably what was happening and causing the noise. And then once they all just fucked off, it uh, stopped making a rattling sound. But I'm just going to press this last one out here. And then you can put the new one in, which is literally just the reverse of what we're doing here. Pretty simple. I'll do this one live without the time lapse because why not anyway take this here line it up and make sure when you're putting this in that you leave make sure it's covering the or i guess i should say not covering this or else you'll just be pressing against it and you're gonna go nowhere so just line that up line this back up put this right on it this will probably line itself up, honestly. Give it a good ugga dugga. Just gonna make sure it's not going in at a weird angle. It is. Take your BMFG, big motherfucking, no, B BMFH. Take your hammer. Realign that. get started on installing the new one but before you do that grab something like this like um oh my god what do you even call this <laughs> just like wax and grease remover sandpaper something like that so you can clean the surface prep it grab a metal file and See if there's any sharp edges. But see, on the inside there, it was kind of pushed in. You want to make sure that's nice and smoothed out and clean. Pull your joint. So, you got to remember to grease it before we start driving. But you can see this one comes with new clips. It's got four of them in there. Then we've got new U joint. You take off the cap on two matching ends, nice and carefully. See, there's a little bit of grease in there already. Check on the inside at those needle bearings. Make sure none of them fall down. If they do, just pick it back up with a flat head and rest it against the side. Nice and gentle. The flash, there we go, yeah, there. Jeez, why didn't I do that before? So you can see those needle bearings in there are all flush and flat. And okay, so you got two sides off. Take your U-joint, slide it in, come soft. Take the head, everything looks proper. Slide this to one side, push it in. Boom, grab the other one. Let's see, Should I, can I put it in right away? Yeah. Put it in like that. I'll line them up. So they're going in. And it should go in fairly smoothly. Don't want to force anything. That could mean one of the bearings is misaligned again. And you want to make it just enough so that the C-clip holes are visible. And then you can put in your clips. Okay, push, push, push. And you'll see just one side pushes in because this is obviously allowing it to push through. 
go in there until this is just about flush and you can see the C-clip channel is oh, visible. Well, that's fun. I think we went a little too far on that one. We'll just push it through the other way. Uh, put the C-clip in, when we push it in, it'll just go to the limit. Should push it back. I just gotta push her back. Boop clicks. Mm. Very interesting. All right, there. Could be some type of <laughs> gotta be some type of tool for putting in C clips that I'm not using. And somebody's probably gonna be screaming at me saying, "What the fuck you doing? Trying to put it in with your thumbs?" Anyway, there clipped over. Now I'm just gonna take the flat head. And gently tap it in here. It's obviously not flush. At least it doesn't look like it is. Yeah, I want to make sure I get it all the way in before I start putting pressure on it. So now we can put this back on. Just push it in slightly more so that we can get the C-clip in on this side. Do the same thing and then put the other part of the yoke over and it'll be good to go. There, I can feel it push through. clip and as long as it's the correct correct width and everything should push in there we go pushed in push it grab this see kind of Bent up that way. Ah, there we go. So that time I seen it move fully in. Now we give this a couple taps. On either end. So you don't you want it to be able to move smoothly. If there's kind of too much resistance, then that's and a good thing, so you give this a couple taps, freeze it up. But that looks pretty flush there, pretty flush there, like they used to, like it was before. Got clips in, so it shouldn't move. done that now we've got new u-joint is in we've got the clips on the inside of each piece here one there one there one there one there and you see in the time lapse I took my hammer tap it on the outside of each side when it's done you can see it should be able to essentially move freely but if you compare this to how it was before but this is so much nicer that way, this way. This way is actually see, a little bit stiff. See, it falls this way on its own. That's what you want. So I'm gonna have to tap it a couple more times because you want it to be able to move freely on its own. But now we can add our grease into here until you just start to see it come out of the sides there and then wipe that off and install this back in. But the important thing is no rotational movement. So that's nice. Fresh, done.
Nice new stuff on there. That took me a minute. I was walking around for a fucking while just looking for something to push the brake in. I wound up, all the tools we've had in the past are just broken. I need to get a new one. So I wound up using just a steering wheel puller and putting the old brake pad in between this here. So anyway, we got our axle seal in there and greased. I just put a little bit of tape around the outside. Now it's in there nice and tight. This is all in there with our new U-joint. We've got a new wheel bearing, new brakes, and new rotors. Amazon Max Brakes Special. We've got the normal rotors. I'm not going to get slotted or whatever because it literally would make no difference. And if you actually off-roaded, you'd probably get stuff stuck in them, if anything. But I went with the Supreme Ceramic. It's a nice shiny box. It was hardly any more money to get some better brake pads, I guess. Anyway, so this side is now done. And I can move on to the next side. Just going to get that done. It's just the same stuff minus the U-joint on the other side. I'm going to take a look at it on the other side. Give it a wiggle, see how it is. I'll let you know if it's bad, but it should be fine. And then we can put on those nice guys and check the alignment. And should be pretty much... Finito. You ask me to bring that guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no. If you ask me bring the guacamole to the party, I'll say no, no, no. That shit's too expensive.